kindly till the feedback kindly till the feedback form the link for which will be shared in the chat box towards the end of the session we request your cooperation in conducting the session smoothly i yukta sharma the core team member of nss shivaji college welcome you all to this webinar hosted by the national service team of shivaji college on the topic exploring immense possibilities we at shivaji college a premier institution of delhi university accredited with the grade a by nac believes in selfless community service and making a significant contribution to the society at nss student and faculty members work together to lend a helping hand to the community the motto of nss not me but you reflects the essence of democratic living and upholds the need for selfless service i would now like to welcome dr pramod sir with the virtual bouquet as a token of gratitude we welcome you sir i would request our faculty member dr vishnu sadati to say a few words thank you yuta and respected midula ma'am sagar sir i think principal sir is not connected uh, but yes we acknowledge actually you know his guide his support constant encouragement throughout in all our activities so it's it's an honor and privilege on behalf of midula ma'am our head our convener and of course the entire nss team i would like to welcome sagar sir to this program who will be speaking on the topic exploring immense possibilities uh while introducing sagar sir i would like to begin on a very very personal note uh in my initial years in shivaji college sagar sir as a principal used to handle a lot of things and uh, me and some other teachers we came in close contact with sagar sir because we used to assist him in some of the task and uh, seeing him work from close quarters has actually been a very delightful and very interesting experience you know sometimes when we would be running into some kind of problems he would actually ask us to sit with him and would solve the problem in a very scientific and systematic manner his commitment discipline sincerity to the institution these are some of the qualities which anyone would actually like to learn from so that is sagar sir for us and uh, you know personal experience apart let me say a few things about sagar sir also uh, like from dr pramod sagar a leading intellectual and one of the sharpest minds of our time has achieved many laurels to his credit in varied fields he has served 43 years of his life in shivaji college before retiring as vice principal in 2012 during this time he was actively involved in college activities such as nss sports discipline theater name anything and sagar sir was just there earlier as, as a faculty member at maharaja agrasen institute of technology for almost 8 years he was actively involved in contributing to the academic world in multiple ways he had been to japan in connection with his phd work and also to bhutan on a deputation as an expert in physics for more than 4 years the dynamism of dr sagar is evident from his distinctions in other fields as well he has obtained nis coaching for a diploma in basketball from patiala and this is actually a, a kind of information for me also i didn't know this uh, besides what is very special for all of us today is the fact that he has also worked as a program coordinator in nss university of delhi sagar sir has published around 15 research papers in international journals participated in many national and international conferences it is a bit surprising that despite being very busy he still manages to find time for the things he loves which include gardening with a specialty in bonsai making trekking is something that makes him feel very much pumped up and excited and some of his endeavors in this regard include 
Rishikesh, and Kailash Mansarovar. The list of achievements could be very long, but I have managed to you know, keep it very brief so that we manage adequate time listening to Dr. Sagar. The topic is very interesting, exploring immense possibilities. And we know it that you know, the immense possibilities that are uh, being unfolded in a globalizing world do not actually come without the challenges. So I'm pretty uh, confident and sure that our young Indians, uh, our students mostly, you know, will be learning a lot from Sagar Sir's lecture and they will actually explore the immense possibilities with a responsibility, with a discipline. And I'm pretty sure of that. So uh, I would not actually, you know, like to spend more time and, you know, stand between Sagar Sir and his audience, virtual audience. So I take this opportunity to invite Sagar Sir to request him to address the audience. Over to you, Sagar Sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, Vishnuji. Thank you very much, Mridla, for giving me an opportunity to talk to my own students. Well, as has been said, I was part and parcel of this institute and remain to be so for the remaining part of my life. Today, we're going to talk about a topic which really explores our own desires, our own intentions in different walks of life. I would, would have preferred if there could have been an interactive session rather than a lecture, because I don't believe in just giving lectures. But anyway, today I will try to address some of the parameters involved in this uh, topic. And then would like all of you to ponder over and ultimately get into what the topic suggests in finite or the immense possibilities which are offered by nature. I will start from What is a possibility? What are areas in which possibilities exist? How many possibilities exist? How can we actually achieve such possibilities? What tools are required to be de developed to achieve those possibilities? What is the purpose to explore into such possibilities? Is there any scientific belief or models which justifies these possibilities to exist. Let me first start. What is a possibility? As you can see on the screen, some issues which appear to be difficult to achieve, but are made to happen. That's a possibility. Converting a given situation into huge possibilities, I like to give some, some examples about it. And third one, even the fictions can be made to become possibility or a reality. Let me say, you have a problem at hand and you think it is rather difficult to handle with or may not be uh, able to succeed in handling that problem. But if you, with your hard work, perseverance and efforts, if you finally achieve a success, it becomes a possibility. Likewise, I can give lots of examples, but because I want to de deal more in other matters, so you can just imagine that the possibilities do exist. Second, converting a given situation into a possibility and possibilities, huge possibilities. I will highlight this point by giving some examples. I had an occasion to go to Japan and there you can check on Google or those who have been to Japan, they can find it out. Cherry blossom has been converted 
into a huge, huge economic possibility. What is a cherry blossom? Cherry blossom. Cherry is a tree only. And it blossoms in the month of October with beautiful pink flowers. But the whole country has planted these cherry blossom, these cherry trees throughout the country in such a manner that you happen to fly over the country of Japan in the month of say October, you will find as if a white pinkish you know, blanket is there down below you. Now, what that country did, they used their religious heads to say that if you make a marry under the blossom of cherry, sure you are going to go to heavens. Well, just this thing went deep into the minds of the people across the world and people started flocking into the country of Japan maybe to go to heaven, but basically to marry under the blossom of cherry. Now, this is a small thing, very small thing, just a cherry, cherry tree. But what have they done? You see, during the month of October, you may not find a place in the hotels in Japan. You will find the entire markets overcrowded. You will find so much of economic activity in the entire country that about 18% of the economy of Japan comes from just cherry blossom. Can you just see? Just a tree, but having been converted into an economic, such a huge economic possibility. Let me give you one more example. The other example, you see, we can think of is, uh, you know, uh, Denmark. You know what Denmark has? Essentially, Denmark has a lot of milk. So they decided, the country decided to embark upon what was available to them, that is milk, producing large varieties of milk products, particularly in the form of cheese and uh, other products, and making it a hub of uh, you know, economic activity. So the milk alone has been converted as a, as a hub of economic activity and, and empowering lots of people in employment, lots of people involving in research and developing new and new uh, varieties of foodstuff out of milk and so on and so forth. So just see, this parameter has been converted into such a big possibility. Thirdly, although there are hundreds and hundreds of such examples exist, but thirdly, I'd like to mention Thailand. In Thailand, you see, they have developed a plant called adenium. It's a flowering plant. But can you imagine this adenium plant, it's grafting and uh, the beauty they have converted of, out of this plant and becoming the lone country in this world who is exploring this plant in hundreds of ways has resulted in an economic boon of the country to the extent of 14%, 14.5% of the total country's economy come from just one plant, adenium. So what I wish to say, any given situation, if properly handled, if intelligently handled, can ultimately lead to a huge possibility. And if I just look at my own country, my country, I just would like to give one instance when one of the cabinet minister, Mr. Kapil Sibal, was addressing a crowd at Vigyan Bhavan and uh, he happened to say two things. One, that the, the, in this universe, the resources are depleting. And second, in our country, the populate, population is overpopulation and it's becoming rather a difficult thing. I interacted. I said, sir, it is true that we, we, are, uh, we are a big population. But can we see that this big population is a big economic boon to the country because we are a consumerist country and lots of people, lots of countries are 
putting in their products to our country uh, and uh, we are becoming a economic possibility. But if on the other hand, if a person is born, don't you think he's born with two hands and a brain? If all our policies, all our efforts are directed in channelizing the hands of the people and the brain of the people, can you imagine what kind of possibilities will emerge in our country? Well, that's for the people, not only at the uh, political level, but also at every level have to ponder over that instead of cursing things, let us make, make use of what is available to us. See, likewise, there are many, many more examples, but uh, I, I would like to uh, take up other matters. Even fiction can be made to become a reality. How many of you want to be professors, astronauts, doctors, sports person, and simultaneously? I'm not talking just you want to be just a professor only, just an engineer only, or an IS officer. I want to say, can you become many of them? And I'll say, yes, there is a possibility. And I'll, I'll give an example of some people who have shown, who have attained gold medals at the Olympic level and they're professional, they're professionally, they are engineers, doctors, and uh, at very other places. But not only two of the parameters they have attained, many, many people are there who, whom we say, oh, he's a multifaceted personality. So, uh, and this is one particular area when we start imagining, should we become this, should we become this? And I say, I will prove, yes, it is possible that we can become all. Not only one, we can become all and we can float in n dimensions. I will prove that it is actually possible to happen. See, I have discussed what is a possibility. What are the areas in which the possibilities exist? And how many possibilities exist? During the course of our discussion, we will come to the point that almost every area, every area with no exception in which the possibilities exist. And there is no question of counting the number of possibilities. In fact, flood of possibilities exist in each and every area. Next point. How can we achieve such possibilities? Uh, I'll be discussing in detail at a little later, but using uh, you know, uh, your efforts, hard work, and uh, your talent, it is possible to achieve such possibilities. What tools are required to be developed to achieve those possibilities? I will be discussing about the tools a little later, but basic tool or the fundamental tool through which everything is achievable is education. And let me make a point. Education is different than being literate. I'm very sorry to say that lots of people in our country may have degrees and they may not be termed as educated people. Education, I don't want to give definition at this stage because we are getting literate. We can read and write. Can we apply whatever knowledge we are gaining? Are we able to apply that? Well, if we are able to apply that, then we are educated. Otherwise, we are only literate. And we have certificate holders in degrees, and that is all. So if you're listening to me, listening to the lecture, and listening to and involving yourself in other uh, activities of life, be educated. What is the purpose to explore into such possibilities? Well, the purpose is, I will be discussing this part also a little later. The purpose is only one, and that is to make the life of all, one and all, more peaceful, more happy, and so on. That is the main purpose. But here I want to give a word of caution. The, all the possibilities which you will finally encounter are not meant for you or me alone. 
everything is meant for we and we all we all are there any is there any scientific belief for such possibilities to exist i'll be discussing with you that there are two models which actually exist and prove that yes such immense or infinite possibilities exist in our system which are there for us to grab let me for start with first model what are we just read this slide we are a part of the nature and according to one school of thought nature is expressed as a cosmos as a living life composed of physical non physical entities in the form of subatomic particles the word as is conceived or perceived it is through our five senses which are five senses through which we conceive the world and that is touch sense of touch sense of hear sense of seeing sense of smell and sense of taste and it is important to mention here that all these senses can only appreciate the physical forms only the non physical forms are not being sensed by any of our senses and therefore we still are not able to appreciate those non physical forms but i'll try to explain as to how we can get in touch even with non physical forms today the physical entities capture a very small fragment of the vastness of this cosmos from where are these physical entities come have come they have they are a part of this cosmos and because they are a part of the cosmos they capture or they inherit only a very small fraction why they only inherit a very small fraction i'll be discussing little later but yes they are only able to inherit a very small part of the uh, vastness of this cosmos the physical entities acquire limitations in physical biological emotional and physio psychological areas these limitations may as well be called as the boundaries of these physical entities now i would like to discuss with you from where the physical uh, from where the limitations have come in now just see our senses i'm sure you you are exposed to some of the scientific terms which i am uh, which i am using now let me look at the sense of hearing we are only able to hear in a frequency range of 20 20 hertz to 20000 hertz whereas the spectrum of frequencies which exist in a which exist throughout the uh, in cosmos or nature is right from 1 hertz onward to 100000 million hertz and beyond so can we see can you appreciate that our hearing senses have been able to capture or limit themselves in a very very small fraction of the entire spectrum which could have which is available to them but our biological senses are such that we are not able to appreciate beyond 20000 hertz however let me point out here some of the animals they appreciate ultrasound waves some of the animals like bats like buffaloes and many other they are able to he, their hearing senses are far better than the hearing senses of we the human beings similarly the sense of sight seeing you see the whole electromagnetic spectrum ranges from 0.001 angstrom unit onward to 100000 meters wavelength but as far as our eyes are concerned we are only able to see within a range of 4000 angstrom unit to almost up to 
8,000, little less than in fact, 8,000 angstrom unit. So this again is a very, very small fraction of the total spectrum of what we could have seen. So do you appreciate that we are only able to hear a small part of the whole thing? We are only able to see very small part of the whole spectrum. Similarly, the sense of touch, the sense of taste are very much less than many of the animals around. So we are therefore in a world of limitations. And these limitations uh, are associated with the physical entity. And these physical entities, the, are, the limitations are also defined as the boundaries of these physical entities. Now look at another very interesting aspect of the whole phenomena. Are we big or small? Well, you will all agree it's a very comparative word. It's a comparative question. But then, if we think we are big, don't you think we just are wasting our time in proving it to be so? We are not really big, but we most of the time we are spent in just proving it to be so. It's a wasteful expenditure and wasteful activity. But then what, then what we do, we really do, many of us. If, however, we compare ourselves with the vastness of cosmos, we will find that we are nothing in comparison to the vastness of this cosmos. So the immense possibilities of this vastness of the cosmos becomes available to us. You see, when we look at this nature, we find the nature has this, nature has that, nature has that. So don't you think we feel like acquiring what the nature provides us, what the nature can possibly give us. And that's the point which I want to make. So if I align ourselves with nature, if we compare ourselves with nature, if we become a part of the nature, then so many possibilities become available to us. Therefore, it is pertinent for us to identify or align ourselves with cosmos instead of a physical entity. At this point, I would like to state one more fact which has become a handicap today for lots of us. You see, when we are born, we are shown maybe uh, our gods as some murtis. We are given some physical model of God. We are given physical model of almost everything. We are not only that, we are given physical model of what we want to be like that. You want to be, you become like that person. You, you achieve the position of IAS officer. You do this, you do this. So we are given physical models. So that means we are limiting ourselves. Now, when we grow, when we start understanding things, it becomes very difficult for us to think beyond these physical models. I'm especially referring to, as a student of science, that when we go into the research and say we are talking about an atom or maybe the uh, subatomic particles of the atom like uh, electron and the fraction of electron and so on, we are not able to develop models for them. And since we are not able to develop models, so we are not even able, uh, able to think about them because we have been so much constrained and tuned to uh, understanding everything through physical models. So here, I'm trying to say that physical models are actually responsible for providing limitations to our imagination. So we have to go beyond that. We have to think, we have to align ourselves, we have to become a part of the nature so that we, uh, we taste, we enjoy the vastness of this nature. Now, one more interesting aspect I want to cover, controlling our thoughts and emotions. Most of the time, we react only to the situation around us through our thoughts and emotions. Our actions are governed through our thoughts and emotions.
our actions are governed through our thoughts and emotions at this stage who provides these thoughts and emotions as i said that physical model which i am talking about to you which i have talked to you about that or the situation around us because we are constrained by the situations around us and the teaching around us and our thoughts are as per what we see what we are given to think and our actions are done accordingly just see imagine if thoughts and emotions control our actions thoughts and emotion is one parameter and if they control our action then we actually land ourselves deeper into the world of limitations only just one example and i i can frame hundreds and thousands of many such examples but supposing you know you are standing at the foot of the hill and looking at the peak what will appear to us oh that peak is so high and it is beyond my reach and once that kind of feeling come to our thoughts our action will make sure that we are not able to achieve the peak of that but if we control our thoughts and actions not from the outside parameters but from within the moment from within we start controlling our thoughts and action then when we start climbing then the physical surroundings will not matter at all our determination will matter our thoughts and action our my dictate to my thoughts will give the action and we should be able to capture that peak and not only that anything you see it is a common saying if we think we have given up even thought thought of giving up means we have given up if we think we are defeated we are lost i can't appear in the examination i i, I can't do this mathematics these are the things which we have developed for ourselves and they are responsible for us not to go beyond not to go beyond so i will say that let these parameters don't dictate us just uh, i'm recalling one uh, uh, incidents of my life in my senior secondary i had attained 149 marks out of my out of total 150 i was excited and i went to my grandparent who was my mentor my model everything and uh, i thought he's going to reward me he said where is that one mark he was more pertinent about that one mark he said look you know we are indians and indians are supposed to be so good at mathematics very very good at mathematics so for us that one mark is very important so that day i realized that i shouldn't be too happy for whatever little i achieved because the sky is the limit for which i should strive for now these boundaries the physical boundaries which uh you know are controlling our thoughts we have to get over them we have to stretch and break these boundaries if you ask me to define spiritualism i'll say spiritualism spiritualism is all about transcending the limitations of our senses which i have just described and going beyond the limitations you want me to give example for that just look at the olympics and i want to specially mention a case of a girl a romanian girl who was 14 years old a gymnast she's in the very first appearance of uh, nadia komansi that girl's name in the olympic in gymnast she attained four gold medal now these four gold medals are not important what is very important that when we set standards of achieving heights 
on the basis of some mathematical calculations considering our physical limitations then it was thought of by the olympic committee that these are the standards which are not achievable and these standards were calculated on the basis of what a human being can possibly achieve can possibly achieve but when this girl achieved 10 out of 10 in four events of gymnast gymnasium the olympic committee was forced to think what about our standards probably higher standards are achievable because that girl was able to stretch the limits beyond the physical limits as set by the olympic committee just just go back you know in this uh, entire phenomena 100 meters which is called sprint 100 meter race is called the sprint and if i recall earlier days of olympics then 100 meters used to be covered initially in 12 seconds nowadays in 9.2 seconds and i foresee the day is not too far off when we'll be able to cover in 6 seconds 5 seconds 4 seconds what's happening we are stretching our limits we are going beyond the imagination of people because these physical limitations are stretchable they are nothing they're just small boundaries and we can break them we can go beyond them we can transcend uh, our uh, limitations of senses and we can break these boundaries and this is what we need to do uh, two things i have so far suggested the models physical models are not helping us and ga gaining control on our thoughts and emotion is important breaking the boundaries is important see now before i give large number of examples where the possibilities have already been achieved i want to give a very interesting scientific model which says infinite possibilities are already associated i know i'm i'll be using some physical terms belonging to science but i have tried to make them as simpler as i could in the earlier school of thought i had said nature has been identified as a cosmos this time na the nature is being identified with energy you see if any one of you is a student of physics all aspects of physics which we study at every level say be it heat and thermodynamics be it light be it sound be it mechanics be it matter everything has come from energy only light is a form of energy so is heat so is matter einstein established e is equal to mc square that energy comes out of matter matter comes out of energy i'll give some examples where energy develops into matter and matter develops into energy the food which we take every day is what the matter but ultimately it gets converted into energy as it goes into our body similarly food grains are produced in the agriculture field out of what out of the energy available received from sun water and other uh, you know parameters but here the energy is being converted into matter a tree a small sapling is planted on the ground and in due course of time it becomes a huge tree big tree which is a big matter so matter is being developed from energy energy can be converted into matter and so on and so forth so everything the fact of the matter is everything is energy we have studied this energy can basically be divided in two components when it comes in the form of when it, when it is actually conceived by us one is physical form which is living and non living 
the non-living physical form, like there is a stone kept over there, it's a non-living physical stone. It may be called as particle or a matter. And that has a very limited aura, very limited aura around it. The second part, where the, the physical entity exists as waves. But waves have a big aura because it can spread out. Now, both these forms are actually conceived from energy, but they are interconvertible. We can convert a non-living physical entity into a living physical entity, and we can convert a living physical entity into a non-physical, uh, non-living physical entity. Now, the quantum physics, I know many of you may not understand, but I think uh, the way I'm pl placing it, it should not be too difficult for us to understand. According to the quantum physics model, the particle which has very limited area, we and we say it has no frequency. It's jad, jad as we call it in Hindi, jad hai. It is not movable. It's just there only, kept there only. But when the same is converted into wave, a wave is called chetan, means it is, uh, you know, vibrant. So when non-vibrant thing is converted into vibrant, it is very important to mention here, and it is this point which, please, uh, you know, take it from me, and if you want, we can discuss at length after this talk also. It is equivalent to not just one wave, but with very large number of waves, having very different frequencies simultaneously present. However, wait, what, are, what I'm trying to say, if a jad becomes a chetan, if a non-frequency item gets converted into waves, it is not just one wave, it is getting converted into, because can I put it like this, that a small particle or a big particle, a small particle or a big particle, a particle is actually equivalent to very, very large number of waves having different frequencies, having different probabilities, simultaneously present and making it a non-living physical entity. Before I proceed further, I would like to make some remarks here. I think I'm sure you must find some people around you whom you might say, uh, well, you see, he's uh, good for nothing. He's just there, he sleeps, eats and sleeps and he or she or that thing is just we call him Jad. He's not contributing anything to. But supposing the same person, if someday, for some met by some mechanical or by some system, becomes vibrant, then what will happen? His becoming a vibrant means one can feel from a distance. Oh, there is a person, and I'm sure you must have certain people around you whom you can feel, oh, he, he is the one, uh, I, I must, uh, you know, immaculate about him. I must try to compare myself with him. So here, this physics, quantum physics is telling me just very interesting part that all the frequencies are inherently present in, within me. All, all means infinite. And each of the frequency has, has a certain probability. And the probability of a given frequency can be changed by external conditions. Just these three lines, and that should summarize everything which I want to uh, express to you. You, within you, you have 100,000 frequencies. Let me associate each frequency with a particular uh, talent. Each frequency is actually present in you. 
So how many talents are present in you according to this model? Infinite. Each of the model has a certain probability. Probability means possibility to exist. But this probability is controllable by suitably changing the environmental condition, suitably changing the physical conditions, the probability of a given frequency, the probability of a given position, the probability of a given talent is controllable. If I say you want to become an IS officer and simultaneously a talented, well-known sports person, say, in table tennis. So these are the two positions you want to achieve. What I will say, in fact, not only these two, lots of positions are already in, inherently within you, but they are lost. You have just to create suitable physical conditions so that the probability that you become an IS officer the probability that you become a table tennis champion at national Olympic or maybe world level becomes a possibility. So what you please take it from me that you are capable, you are capable of having hundreds and hundreds and thousands of positions within you. That is why all the time I'm trying to focus you focus you, get off the physical models and get into the inside you. I'll go a little more detail in that. So the moment you are able to appreciate that, yes, I can go beyond what is being said. I can really go beyond what is being said. You will start achieving what you want to aspire to. So each of the frequency, if associated with the possibility, it can be considered that anyone from lifeless object, when it goes, I have already explained to you that let us go from dead to Chetan. Let's increase our aura and let's increase the different possibilities which exist within us. And we can achieve them, not just few of them, but many of them and even simultaneously. All we have further to do is to develop our senses as detectors of different frequencies through the process of resonance. Now, this line is very important and I would like all the audience to please listen to me a little carefully. I'm not dictating, but I'm suggesting because I have followed it. I'm enjoying this, this last line of myself. Now, I like to go back, take you to some TV serials. In a TV serial, you know, Mira who worships Krishan, she, she is able to see Krishan, she is able to talk to Krishan, but when Krishanji appears, only she is able to see and others are not able to see. I think in many of the serials, which may appear to you as religious serials, which may appear to you as fictions, but what I am talking, these fictions, we can prove them to be reality at some point of time. That a person you think of and the person is present before you. I want to develop this property within you. This property within you can be developed. And how can it be developed? All of you can actually develop this property and let's see how you can do that. I'm sure I'd like to give one ex example. Vishnuji, you must be deeply associated with any family member, I'm sure, maybe your wife, maybe your child, maybe anyone, at least one, if not many. Now, just think of the person you are deeply associated. Can you not see his image before you? The moment you think, yes. Now, to prove my point further, I'm just speaking. So you're listening. Let me stop speaking. Can you understand what I want to say? That means a communication without words, without language. Yes, my dear, it is possible. Because the moment I think I'm developing a thought, what has happened to that thought? Thought is a wave. And that wave spreads out. But 
the physical senses developed by our science so far are not able to appreciate such waves because such waves do not have su sufficient amount of energy for these senses to detect. And that is why my thoughts remain with me, although they are there, but others are not able to understand it. But I, I, I can make sure that you understand it. Just as I said, our Vishnuji have some relationship, some deep relationship with a person. I want to say that the relationship developed between Mr. Vishnu Satpati and that gentleman and that person has a resonance of thoughts between the two of them. In physics, I'll say resonance. That means they think on the same frequency lines. They think together in a unison. This unison nature of the frequencies require very small, small amount of energy for our senses to detect. So I want you to take into that era that you don't need to speak yet you are being understood what you want to say. And it is possible. Today, unfortunately, we are so much of self-centered. Just think within you. With how many people you have uh, developed a feeling for each other? Develop a feeling at least for someone and so closely that there is no need to express anything and yet you understand everything. It is possible and this is what science is. Through a process of resonance, resonance of thoughts in this case, we can develop our human senses so that we can even communicate without any language. Well, with this, you know, this model of science is suggesting that infinite possibilities exist within us and we can explore them. We can develop human senses to a very high level. These are the two aspects. All we need to do is to become vibrant and we don't become need to become lifeless object. Now, there are tools which need to be developed to achieve the objectives of these possibilities. The greatest tool is education. The greatest tool is education, but please remember, I have already said something about education, not, not being literary, literary person, but not literate person, but educated person. I've already mentioned, so uh, I, I'm not further emphasizing, but it is through education. It is through education that we can develop new technologies which can help us. It is through education, we can develop intelligence, which have been talent, intelligence, which have already been categorized by some Harvard scholars in seven categories. I'll just mention them. The second tool required for achieving is hard work. Patience and perseverance have magical effect in overcoming difficulties in our way. Because when we want to achieve something, well, obviously, we are going to overcome difficulties. We, we are going to have difficulties. We are going to have difficulties, maybe economic difficulties, physical difficulties, and so on and so forth. But our hard work, our patience and perseverance can actually break all the shackles and can possibly achieve what we want to. They help us in achieving that. The second thing, removing negativities. You see, unfortunately, when we want to achieve highs, when we want to achieve various possibilities, then negativities have no role. Complexes have no role to play in our life. You see, what we say, oh, he is uh, from South, he is from Odisha, he is from Delhi. So why aren't we talking about, we have developed some inherent complexes about people? 
he is he or she gender complexes he is rich man i am a poor man i mean this complex so there are hundreds of complexes we try we are living in and these hundreds of living uh, the these complexes are creating more limitations in the uh, in achievement of those possibilities which we can possibly do so we have to forget and drop these complexities in our life just a passing reference once me and my wife drove from delhi to bangalore in my vehicle and coming across people in different parts of uh, the states on the course as i reached bangalore in 5 days my wife said oh my god the people of my country are so good so wonderful so wonderful i had not thought of you see these complexities develop because we don't interact we have gathered specs from others to see others where is your own spec so do so today please give me a word you will use your specs you will use your eyes to see others not others will give you eyes to see unfortunately many of the religions are creating hurdles in the development of the humanity because they are made to say oh it is mentioned there it is he has said it he may have said it it may have been mentioned what about me what is my role just to listen others and follow I, so that's how my thoughts are there so i need to develop my own thoughts and when i want to develop my own thoughts i have to drop these complexes for all, once for all which means negativities so that for that and second you know next exploring inner core listening to our own heart and not to the noise around us you see you may be in a situation whom should you listen to in moving further to the people around or to yourself listen to your own heart there is always a noise around you don't need to listen to the noise listen to yourself and that's why develop your own inner core to guide your thoughts and actions emotions that will develop confidence in you and confidence in self is one of the objective to achieve any of the possibility or many of the possibility so develop the self confidence give confidence to others develop self confidence within you developing a touch of life what is a touch of touch of life most of us you see if we want to be vibrant then we have to touch this line touch of life the sun came in the morning sun sets in the evening so it's a periodic process what do i have to do nothing everything comes like everything runs like a machine what do i have to do nothing there is no life in it the flower blooms there is no life in it but have you seen a mother she enjoys every moment as to how her child develops grows and it is this mother which touches life in the growth of the child and the child grows so the touch of life exists not between not only between the mother and the child i want this touch of life to be developed within you everything which happens around you you can think of the life in that to say <laughs> i was in the garden i read somewhere that pansy flower when becomes into seed and the capsule of the seed opens it gives a music i read it somewhere well i could have taken it like that i didn't do that i wanted to listen to that music i i, I don't know when that flower the capsule of pansy flower is going to open i had no idea but there were lots of pansy flowers in capsule form 
because they, the flowers had died down, the seeds have been formed, they were uh, you know, uh, contained in the capsule. I, I was waiting for the capsule to open and listen to the music which I read. It took me three nights to sleep in the garden of Shivaji College to listen to that sound of the capsule opening. And imagine when the capsule opened, for a fraction of a second, the sound was there, but I was so excited. There is a need to develop touch of life in everything. Otherwise, you're going to become a statue. Now the talent, I think I have to look at the time also. So these are the different forms of the talent, which can be grown logical and mathematical, which means reasoning. There are some talent where the reasoning becomes more important. Interpersonal. Interpersonal means I can, I can develop the relationship when I understand the others. So this is the understanding of the others is an interpersonal talent. Intrapersonal. Let me understand myself. Intrapersonal is to understand myself. Interpersonal is to understand others. Musical. I'll come to it a little later. Spatial, linguistic, bodily kinematics, that is coherence. Coherence is between my thoughts and actions. So I think something and my actions are different. So there is a lack of coherence. So that again is a talent that what I speak, what I want to speak, I speak that. This bodily kinesthetics or incoherence is almost maybe nine, more than 90% of the politicians of the country because what they say, they don't mean it. There is no coherence in what they say and what they speak, what they mean. So all the time, even in the court of law, they'll say, I didn't mean, I said it, but I didn't mean it. I don't want you to be people who say, I said it, but I didn't mean it. So there has to be a coherence in what you say and what you mean. Li linguistic, you see, few, the ling language, is so beautiful a thing that if you really understand the language to develop the talent and intelligence of the language, every language, every language minded has something to, uh, you know, develop the interpersonal or the human relationships. And it creates a touch of life. Just one line. Uh, just one line, see. Tum naai to kya seher na hui. Haan, magar chan se basar na hui. You know its meaning? Tum nai aai to kya koi kaam ruk jayega? Koi kaam nai rukega. Kisi se koi kaam nai rukega. Lekin, tumhare kaam karne ki baat kuch aur thi. Aaj kuch aur. Shabdoon se, hum ek dousare ko jodte hain. That is the language. Spatial, again an artistic aspect of intelligence. I look around, you see in my garden I have hundreds of pots. In my imagination, I start arranging that these pots according to the color, size, etc, etc, should be arranged like that. I develop it first year, I translate it into the ground, and when it is translated, it becomes different. So that's again a kind of intelligence. The interior decorators, the painters, they make use of this spatial level of talent and intelligence. Musical. Again, I come back to science. You see, I have seen a picture where a person is made to become insane by noise. And the same person is being treated by the soft sound. I was interacting with a child at the age of uh, 15 years old. She was a student of class 10, and my, the, and my friend's daughter. So I was talking to her something about the sound, the waves. Then said, uncle, the waves do have the impact on the brain? I said, yes. Depending upon the intensity and the frequency, they have lots of impact on the brain. And she said, it means 
lot of human body disorders can also be cured by using the sound the music i said yes now it's been 2 years that girl is now in class 12 but her part time and her every day religiously to us she is interacting with a sound system having variable frequency variable intensity level and then trying to see eeg of the human beings eeg is a is a technique to understand to uh, know the amount of oxygen absorbed in the brain and she has been able to see that different people absorb different amount of oxygen at various frequencies of sound and she was able to cure to a great extent a covid patient who had a problem of oxygen oxygen problem is not only in the blood the oxygen problem is also in the brain so she said let me try the brain part the other part may be taken care by the others and she was very happy she found wonderful results out of that well i have hundreds of examples i will not go because the paucity of time but i'll definitely like to highlight some of the examples which can which can really make you feel that if these things are being done already being done why many others cannot be done see the when the computer came has anybody thought of that computers will be so extensively used and in almost all walks of areas of our life so much so it will become an era of computer now can you name a thing which which is not being handled by the computer and i think there are hundreds and thousands of more possibilities which do exist by the use of computer biological entity is the most limiting identity defining the area of existence as i've said the limitation of our senses will again is a biological entity but in this biological entity will you possibly accept that the cells in a human body total number of cells in a human body are far 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 more than the total number of stars in the entire galaxies second every day millions of cells decay and new cells are formed in our body every day this is happening can we think of tailoring these cells can we think of controlling the direction of the growth of these cells well yes this is called genetic engineering and as a result of genetic engineering lot many results have already been achieved tailoring of cells genetic engineering ivf i am sure you know it surrogacy i think you also know but not only that i said the bats have a bats have a property of uh, understanding ultrasound waves but i want to have this property so by tailoring the cells experiments have been made and at least one person has been able to achieve this property in usa where he is able to appreciate you know this ultrasound frequencies because his organs have been changed accordingly so it's all possible i am only talking about possibilities and if you want how a given possibility is to be achieved then it's a different subject matter but yes it is all possible to achieve it to discuss it lots of animals have been trained and used become useful for the human society one of my relation a colonel in the army posted at ladakh a uh, leh ladakh he found that double hump camels in ladakh are ferocious animals wild animals he studied them very thoroughly and in a period of 3 years time the double hump camels have now become a very useful category animals what useful 
the double lump chemicals uh, animals uh, camels can survive in a temperature of minus 30 degree centigrade minus 30 degree centigrade they can survive number one number two they can survive without food for month and a half just taking ice is good enough for them third they can carry a payload of plus 200 kg they can carry a payload of 200 kg on the back so with the transportation of luggage goods human beings was thought to be so difficult at high altitude areas in certain areas and others he has developed number of such camels as a squad and for which the honorable prime minister of india has awarded him with promotions and with you know medals but a person has done it sniffer dogs dolphins etc have long been used for detecting using so the training of animals can take place you have to understand the uh, biology uh, biochemistry of such animals and it is possible to attain that i have already talked about the stretching of uh, li human limits at the olympic level let me now talk of molecular cell biology since lot last maybe 15 20 years the new variety of seeds which have very big yield without compromising with the quality of the product have been developed and they are being used but more so now hydroponics and aeroponics which is my subject too israel has undertaken the hydroponics and aeroponics in a very big way you see plants grow what do they require energy where is it said that they must have energy from the soil nowhere so when it was thought of that the energy is not necessary to come from soil energy can come through water so the plants were given energy through water and hydroponics started becoming a reality and nowadays at least at maybe 100 levels or maybe little more in india hydroponics is being used to develop vegetables and many other uh, things fruits even i have i'm developing at my place in dehradun through using hydroponics i have developed tomatoes i have developed uh, you know uh, cherries uh, not cherries strawberries and some vegetables and this can be done at home it can be done on the terrace and this possibility is actually achievable realizable i'm doing it i'm a small person i'm, I'm doing it hundreds and thousands of people can do it but we need to encourage it but the israel went one more step further israel said why only through water if through air we can provide nutrients to the roots of the uh, you know plant the plants can survive so providing nutrients to the plant through the air is called a technique of aeroponics aeroponics is is, is so much in common in israel and then the second country which has which is taking up to aeroponics is china and third country is america but we have yet to make a beginning but these are the areas if we just think of expanding it bringing it to the level of most common people i think the results you can even imagine so generating you see still one more you know thing which can which I would like to talk about, and that is hybridization of plants. Plant hybridization. Nowadays, the hybrid plants, the hybrid seeds, maybe it has become a fashion, maybe it has become the need of the day, because our the original plants require 
more things in terms of uh, nutrients, sunlight, space, height, etc. And they were limited in their colors and their uh, properties. But through the process of hybridization, name a plant, name a flowering plant. I'm in Bangalore these days and down in my society, geraniums have been planted, hybrid geraniums have been planted. And I just counted them a few days back. There were about 29 colors. And the height of the plant is not more than eight to nine inches. Whereas the original plant grows very high, very limited number of colors. So nowadays people are entering into you know, hybridization and this has become a, such a big, huge economic activity. And in our country, Pune uh, is one place where you will see hybridization of plants being used. But unfortunately, I'm using the word unfortunately, in our country, the hybridization is not being done. The cell molecular, cell molecular biology, which is known as a tissue culture biology, is being done in a very small way. But hybridization is not done at all. And we import hybrid seeds from the different parts of the world and grow them in our country and sell them as an economic. One of the person known to me has a nursery in Pune and he files an income tax return of more than 5 crore rupees a year. So you can imagine filing a return and actual income must be very different. So 5 crore rupees, just one small nursery and uh, out of hybrid, hybrid plants. So you see this possibility could have been explored, could have been you know, promoted and so on. Well, that's what it is. So generating new energies, the solar energy, the hydro, hydrogen energy. You see, ever since Barack Obama took up the presidentship of USA, Barack Obama said, I want the entire US to become solar by 2021. Unfortunately, he lost the election or probably he didn't contest, I don't know. But his baby, the solar energy growth, Mr. Trump was not very, uh, you know, uh, very amusing about this property. So, uh, well, it slowed down. But nevertheless, the Americans, instead of 2021, probably 2025 or 2026, they will be totally solar. Ever since our Honorable Prime Minister, Mr. Modi, started encouraging the solar in Delhi, we may be distributing free, but because it is available, so we may do anything. The availability has become a reality because the solar, I think even Shivaji College has solar energy now at the rooftop, but lots of institutions and lots of houses with the encouragement of the government are now taking to solar energy. And therefore new and new researches are going on in solar energy. And I, I am not interested in the, uh, just talking about the solar energy much more because it's a technical subject, but yes, the solar energy is at your doorstep. No, new efficiency solar materials are now being sought to be developed. Likewise, from the platform of the, you know, Lal Kila this year, our Honorable Prime Minister again has said, let us explore more and more possibilities of developing new energies in solar and hydrogen. Hydrogen as a fuel, because hydrogen is so much in abundance. You know, anything can burn next. Now I just want to make one statement. Energy is all around. Is that energy available to us? So our knowledge, our efforts should only be to ensure that the energy is available to us. Energy is there. So hydrogen is there. But is that hydrogen available to us? Can we make it safely available to us? Can we make it easily available to us? Can we make it friendly available to us? Yes, many countries and the topmost country working in this direction is Japan. I myself have traveled a small distance in hydrogen driven car, uh, maybe in 2003, when I was there. So in 2003, now it is 2021. The fake end of the 2021 is there, but now, ever since the government of India is now encouraging 
the use of hydrogen. You will see for yourself in next two years time, maybe three years time, the hydrogen will become a reality to be used as a fuel. But I don't want to limit myself to solar or hydrogen. I like to say energy is everywhere. All I have to develop is to ensure how do I get that energy for my useful form. Well then, another very interesting component. I know the time is approaching, but still I would like to make some reference. Have you ever heard some Rishi Muni living without food at the foot of the Himalayan hills? You may have only heard. During my Kailash Mansarovari, you know, track, I met lots of such people at a height of 16,000 feet with no clothes on, no food with them. And I wondered, how did they survive? I'm sharing it with you. You can survive without food. What is the average food intake which you have every day? Your Google will say it's 2,000 calories per woman fox, 2,500 calories per uh, male fox, 4,000 calories for laborers, and so on and so forth. Good, fine. Now may I analyze the 2,500 calories which we have taken, how, are being, how, how, how is it being used? Just apply to yourself. How many thoughts travel through your mind every day? Is every thought not an energy? Has every thought not consumed an energy? According to another school of thought, Brahm Kumaris, they say uh, 50,000 thoughts travel through your mind every day. So if every thought consumes a very small amount of energy, the total energy consumed in our thought process becomes not less than 25% of this total energy. Our physical movement, our speaking, we keep on speaking even if when we don't want to speak or we don't need to speak, but we're spending energy. We are moving even when we don't have to move, we are spending energy. So in our movements, in our thought process, in our every activity, we are consuming energy. What is the energy requirement for survival of our organs? That comes to a very small part of the total. It is there, realizing this particular part, the NASA is training its child astronauts and other astronauts to be for three years rigorous training in controlling these thoughts, that is meditation. In controlling unnecessary talks, in controlling unnecessary movements and living on very small food. Because if you have to travel in a space, you can't afford to carry so much of uh, a luggage in the form of calorific values. You can't do that. You cannot do that. So you have to limit your food intake and utilize every calorie of what you have taken. The day you start doing it, can you imagine how much food will be extra available to all of us? There is absolutely no question, no doubt that lots of us are only wasting everything, all resources, including food. Well, we can go on giving so many examples. Can, had you ever thought Dubai the land of Dubai could have been converted to green? Do you think it could have been ha could have happened? It has happened. It's one of the most greenest part of the world. The determination, the perseverance and technology. So what you think appears to be impossible to achieve, but has actually been achieved. People are achieving it. And that's why I say, Yes, the few examples which I'm giving 
and the computer, I think, is the era which you can think. I can suggest you many more such things, many more such things. And I'm at least on one of them are working, but I don't want to share at this stage. But yes, huge possibilities are before us. Well, to summarize, whatever I have said, I would like to substantiate some of the, not substantiate now summarize them in few words more important part being unison with cosmos and not aligning with the physical world that means not depending upon a physical model will open immense possibilities immense possibilities for us to achieve we will be able to infuse life into the physical objects or events by providing touch of life in them like an artist. I've already explained, develop that feel of being an artist, develop the ideas within your brain and trans brain, translate them into a reality which the artists do, which the interior decorators do, which the, uh, you know, such people, the painter do. And mind it, I want to make a difference between a statue and a murti. Statue is just a non-living organ, physical entity, but murti is not. That's why, you know, the judge is called Nyayaka murti. A statue nahi hai. Vibrant hai. So we will be able to transcend the limits of our senses and develop touch of life to lighten up the spirit of community in handling social environmental issues. Now coming to the level at which we exist as of now. Appreciating what I have said earlier and appreciating, emphasizing one more point, it is not I, it is we. The entire Gita is on we, not I. That we need to lighten up the spirit of community you can start doing it by, uh, you know, some taking up issues at the community level, maybe even plastic, maybe kitchen waste converting into compost, maybe many other things, and maybe educating them that don't just, you know, burden your house with things not to be used, not to be used, not usable, etc. I'm not going into such details, but I'm saying, we have to become a part of the community. And if by doing so, we can help in developing the environment in which we live in, the environmental issues, we can handle it. So this is what at the NSS level, we can start doing it. But again, one more thing. Those who are in the field of computer, they may have heard of ethical happening, Unethical hacking, unethical hacking. So, energy. Nuclear fission can be used for nuclear reactors, can be used as a nuclear weapon. So, all these possibilities, once you start understanding, realizing, obviously, there are two ways. One, unethical results commercial results, self-centered results, other meant for everybody. I'm here to ensure, I'm here to tell you, please, whatever you do, might do in your life. It's not you. You are not alone. You are a part of the entire setup. So be a part of the community. And don't be a human being. Be a human. And by to be a human is you cannot afford to be self-centered. Now, I have written a quotation for myself. I don't know if you will appreciate. Novelty of nature is such that its variety is infinite. Not, not just changing forms, but in profundity, profundity of insight, and newness of ideas. Therefore, human inquiries can continue indefinitely to yield new possibilities. In the end, let's be vibrant. 
jubilant joyful every day so that every moment will appear to be never ending and world will be full of immense possibilities thank you so much thank you sir for such an insightful session now i would like to ask you the questions posted yes. by our audience people fear to try new things and hence lose some amazing opportunity coming their way sir can you suggest a way to overcome this fear overcome what please be little louder people fear to try new things and hence lose amazing opportunity coming their way sir you can see, you suggest a uh, yeah yeah that's right you see fear comes from where fear comes from our physical models to which we have been explored exposed to our thoughts we need to control our thoughts instead of thoughts controlling us so these thoughts which have been you know framed out of what we have been the model and the environment and the you know like you know a child is moving oh don't run you will fall don't run you will do this so these thoughts which have been infused in us are responsible there is no fear otherwise to give you an example my son is in us and there is a park one part of the park has wild animals particularly snakes and many lots of snakes are there and lots of people travel move every day in that park there is no fear because they have developed they know everybody knows that they they exist we also exist and we got to coexist so that fear psychosis have been taken away and that is why my dear education we need education not dictation i am not a dictating you i am suggesting you if you are educated if you start controlling your thoughts if you don't have the specs given to you by somebody else you develop your own specs then no fear will come in your way and what you think is achievable people have achieved it so you look at this so many people have achieved so many things why can't i do that everything if you look at it from the thought process point of view everything will have difficulties you have to overcome these difficulties and it's possible to do that thank you sir so next what do you consider the major aspect when it comes to choosing an opportunity pardon please speak a little louder what do you consider the major aspect when it comes to choosing an opportunity fine first of all you have to develop a model for yourself through a process of education as i have listed that the talents and the intelligence level comes at various levels and through this process you might have developed talents in different areas of life using that talent using your own desire you can pick up an opportunity as i said you are floating in the sea of opportunities so pick up the one and the ones you are interested and for that the first and the foremost thing that be educated and this education means training our faculties in various areas of intelligence level talent level and as i said the harvard people have categorized them in seven part one may do in more parts that's not very important but yes in any given part if you develop the talent automatically things will start moving in that direction for you you will choose everything accordingly you see i i i have a passion uh, for flora nobody has to tell me i keep on learning i keep on trying keep on trying and for my satisfaction i'm living with flora i hope that should help you in choosing because cho before you start choosing decide what you want to be move in that direction things will come to you and develop self confidence well the various things which i mentioned there i think they will help you in achieving what you really want thank you sir for such a motivational session i'm sure this session must have inspired many among us now i would call dr amita handa ma'am to give the vote of thanks 
good evening to everyone on behalf of nss team shivaji college university of delhi and the entire fraternity of the institute i extend a heartfelt thanks to the speaker of the webinar dr pramod sagar ji who spent his valuable time gracing the occasion today we had the opportunity to hear your thoughts and opinion sir and this will definitely encourage all the participants a special thanks to the college principal professor shiv kumar sadev for providing immense support to make this program successful i also appreciate the organizing student team for their hard work and coordination i thank all the participants for following the protocol and coordinating in smooth conduct of the program thank you thank you ma'am